Going on the deep web was one of the most foolish mistakes I've ever made. The deep web is home to all sorts of disturbing stuff, such as drugs, messed up porn, murder, hitman services, and torture. When I first heard about the deep web from my cousin, he told me all about it. Of course I didn't believe a word he said, and I didn't really care. It just sounded fake to me. That was years ago when he told me that, until one day when it came across my mind. For once, I decided to check out the deep web. I had recently talked to my cousin about it, and he told me what to do and what not to do. He told me what I should do was to stay away from any illegal content such as child pornography and other things like that. He told me some things of what not to do on the deep web, which was, one, don't click any questionable links. Two, never use a Windows computer on the deep web. Three, never buy anything from the deep web. And four, don't trust anyone or anything. So anyway, I turned on my computer and downloaded Tor. Tor is a special browser to access the deep web. So anyway, within a few minutes, I was surfing the deep web. I was looking through links and pages and stuff like that, and it was nothing too dark. It was just some forums and some drug websites. Overall, it was boring and I didn't do drugs so I had no interest in that. Then I found a link that was in red. All the other links were just blue. Out of curiosity, I clicked the red link. It led me to a site called No Escape. The site was basically human experimentations. I saw a video where a woman was naked and tied to a chair. The woman looked hungry and tired, stressed and thirsty. There was a timer on screen that said, 3 days, 6 hours and 48 minutes. At first I was confused, but then I realized that it meant how long the woman was there for. I felt disturbed and clicked out of the deep web. I went on my phone and played some Minecraft for about half an hour when I got a phone call from an unknown number. I figured it might be someone I know either prank calling me, or someone has the wrong number. I picked up, and I heard a voice, a voice of a man that didn't sound familiar. He said, Hey David, did you like what you saw? He said my name. How did he know my name? How did he get my phone number? I hung up and went back to the computer. I knew exactly what he was talking about and I deleted the Tor browser and wiped out everything on the computer. I never went back on the deep web again. This story happened to me on the deep web. The deep web is basically the hidden internet that contains dark content, such as drugs, pedophiles, hitmen, and torture. None of that really interests me. The only reason why I was on the deep web was to look for government secrets and stuff like that. After looking for links that had to do with that type of stuff, I eventually got bored and decided to find other things on the deep web. I had a VPN on, so if I ever came across something illegal, I wouldn't get caught. I then came across a link that led me to a site. It was called the Devil's Chamber. It gave a description of the website. Basically, it was a snuff film, aka torture and murder films. There was a black video box with a play button. I was very curious and clicked on the play button. A black screen popped up with a timer and a live chat box with people waiting for something. The timer said 3 minutes till showtime. I got curious and typed in the chat what everyone was waiting for. They all said, a murder livestream. I didn't like this and I put my cursor over the X. But as soon as I was going to click out, text appeared on the black screen that said, it's showtime. I watched and waited to see what was going to happen. Just then, a screen appeared with a woman tied to a chair in a dimly lit room with a door. Then, someone with a mask appeared on screen as well. The person in the mask 
stared at the camera and said, It's time for pain. He then opened a door and closed it behind him. A few seconds later, he came out with a dog tied to a chain. The dog was barking like crazy in a really aggressive way. It was a pit bull and I knew what was about to happen. The pit bull lunged at the woman, attacking her while still tied to the chair. She was screaming in pain as the dog was biting and chewing her apart. A few minutes later, she stopped screaming and she was dead. The person in the mask then walked out of the room with the dog leaving the woman whose flesh was literally torn apart. I closed out immediately and deleted the Tor browser. I will never, and I repeat, never go back on the deep web again. This experience happened to me on the deep web, and I almost got killed by going on it. Let me explain. I was in high school at the time, in my sophomore year, and I barely had any friends. I had only one friend at the time who was a junior. We'll call him Isaac. Isaac was one of those people who were into drugs and stuff like that. It was him who told me about the deep web. He talked about how you could buy illegal guns, drugs, and stolen products from different companies. I wanted to see what this whole deep web thing was. So when I got home, I texted Isaac on how to get onto the deep web. He told me that I had to download the Tor browser in order to have access to it. So I fired up my PC and downloaded the Tor browser. And after setting up a few more things, I was finally on the deep web. Isaac told me that you had to click questionable links in order to go deeper. So anyway, after I was done setting up Tor, it led me to the hidden wiki. There were categories like drugs, adult content, porn, documents, etc. I clicked documents and it just showed links to a bunch of different websites that I didn't really care for. Isaac had warned me about illegal pornography and murder that you could find on the deep web. I tried to stay away from things like that since it was just messed up and disgusting. Anyway, I continued searching and clicking links and eventually I found a site called Hell Palace. I knew it was probably dangerous because of the name of the site, but at the same time, I was curious as to what things lied beyond the first page of the site. I clicked photos and videos about the site, and I really wish I didn't. What I saw was something that will never leave me. There were at least hundreds of pictures of people all being tortured and going through horrible things that no one should ever go through. I don't even want to go into any detail of what I saw in those pictures. I then saw a little chat box appear on screen that said, I can see you didn't like what you saw. I typed back saying that you guys are not human and that I would report this to the authorities immediately. That was probably the biggest mistake I've ever made, because not even 10 seconds later, they typed back saying, okay, I'll see you at this address. I looked at the address, which looked familiar, and then it hit me. The address was mine. At this point, I was panicking. I closed the window and deleted the Tor browser and wiped out everything from my computer. A few hours later, I calmed down and forgot all about what had happened. I continued on with my life, going to school, playing video games, watching movies and stuff like that. About a week later, my mom and dad were going out to dinner and they left me home alone. I had finished homework and went to go play some video games in my room. As I was playing, I thought I could hear something. I lowered the volume and I heard nothing. I thought that maybe I was just hearing things, so I went back to playing my game. I'd say not even five seconds later, I felt a hand grab my leg. I freaked out and ran to the front door, but there was some guy with a mask blocking it. 
Then, three more men came out from the back door and one out of my room. There were five people in total, all surrounding me. Keep in mind, I was a pretty big guy, six foot four, but I could not take down five people all at once. I said in a shaky voice, What do you people want from me? The guy who was blocking the door approached me and said, Remember we said we would meet you at your address? At first, I didn't know what he was talking about, but then it hit me. That sight on the deep web. The man blocking the door said, Get him. Then, they all tackled me and tied my hands with rope and duct taped my mouth. They carried me outside of to their van. By now, I knew what was going to happen. I was going to be put on that website for speaking out against it. Then, what happened next was a gift from God. I heard sirens in the distance approaching my house. The men then dropped me and they all ran into the van and sped off. A minute later, the police arrived and comforted me. I told them everything that had happened and my parents arrived shortly after. It turns out my neighbor saw the white van pull up to my driveway and he got suspicious and called the police. Long story short, the cops never found the guys and that still kills me to this day. We moved out of state and I want nothing to do with the deep web. Nothing has happened since then and I hope nothing does. Please, for the love of God, don't make the same mistake I did and stay away from the deep web. I can't disclose much information, but I work for the UK government. I was assigned to track down several missing people who were spotted on what is known as the Deep Web. I had briefly heard of this place before, but some research was required before I went in. It is a place where criminals can be safe. Contract killers, live stream murders, child pornographers, the darkest depths of the internet. Time to get to it. I fired up my PC and downloaded the Tor browser. No problems. Installed and up running in a matter of moments. Due to my prior research, I knew the hidden wiki would lead me to find the sites I needed. The missing people had been spotted on a live stream torture site. This is where I started. So many horrific acts. I saw one where someone captured a homeless man and the director was commenting on what they wanted done to him. He had his eyes gogged out, face cut and skinned, all alive. On with the search. I was looking for a white male, brown hair, blue eyes, around 6 feet and 195 pounds. This was not going to be a pleasant experience. I counted 23 people, if not more, being tortured raped, mutilated, and brutally murdered in front of the camera. Until I found one which stood out. White male, brown hair, around 6 feet, who looked about 195 pounds. I had to endure watching him being tortured and killed for 47 painful minutes. After the murder, something even worse happened. I saw that the murderer cut open his chest and spread his ribs and lungs out like a bird. I had seen this before. The Blood Eagle. The Blood Eagle was once used to kill a king who killed someone's father, originated in Nordic civilizations. The details weren't important now. What was important was the fact that the Blood Eagle cult could be back. A group of contract killers who operated anywhere and everywhere, always sacrificing people to the eagle, which they called God. Someone has to put a stop to this. I didn't have the resources, I didn't have the training to take down a criminal organization by myself. I didn't even have any solid evidence to take my superiors, no proof of the blood eagles even existing. Just one sick and twisted video I found on the internet. I needed a break to return to normality. I closed down the browser after exiting the site. Something was very wrong. 
my desktop background. It wasn't the picture I cherished for me graduating from Sandhurst with my proud uniform and family. It was something which would forever change me. A picture. A picture of a corpse with his ribs spread open and his lungs on display. A blood eagle. I couldn't take any more. I gasped and powered down my computer. A virus? It must be. It used to scare the sickos who watched those things. I ran out of my office, but I heard my computer whirring into life. Dashing back into the room, I stared in horror at the monitor. No blood, no gore, just some words. My name. Then the words. The eye of the eagle sees all. How did they remotely turn on my computer? How do they know my name? I ran outside, grabbing my keys, wallet, phone, etc. I quickly took a breath of fresh air and walked. I just walked for a while. In the real world, it was just a computer virus, right? Wrong. I couldn't be out too long. My wife would be coming home from work. She can wait. I was scared. For once, I was truly scared. Terrified, you could say. I found myself sitting on a bench, talking to a nice old man about the weather and woodworking tips and other hobbies. I forgot about everything that had happened until I went home. My door was unlocked, a tad open. Strange. Jenny, my wife, always keeps the doors locked. I opened and blowed upstairs. Sorry, love, I took a walk, needed a breather. I ran upstairs to see her, not noticing the blood on the walls. I opened the bedroom door. The whole room was red, soaked with blood. What I can only hope wasn't Jenny's face was slashed up beyond all recognition, and her throat was slit multiple times. I've seen dead before, but nothing close to this. I stared in horror, the wings, her lungs spread out over her ribs, the blood eagle. What? How the hell? My flood of anger and fear, overwhelming misery, was interrupted by a voice. It said my name although heavily distorted. It came from my computer. I saw the face of a black and white mask, yet still slightly pixelated. I screamed, What have you done? Who are you? What the hell are you? He replied with, We. He said, We are the Blood Eagle. We kill as he wishes. Do not stop us. Do not try. Do not search us or you and your closest family will suffer. The eagle sees all and can do terrible things. I was speechless and feeling like I brought this upon her. I wanted nothing to do with this anymore. I made a decision. I rung the police, told them what happened. They investigated, said it was a suicide. I couldn't believe it. Weeks passed and I was haunted by the event. I booked a flight to Canada, and we had a nice little log cabin there. I packed almost everything I had, my trusty shotgun, clothes, all my cash and Canadian dollars. I left my life behind and quit my job. I never wanted to go back to the deep web, or have anything to hear from it. I keep to myself and live in a relatively simple life. Therapy helped me recover. I'm happy now. Years have passed. I feel safe. Almost. However, let this be a lesson to everyone. The eagle sees all. Want to look into them? Want to stop them? Fine by me. I'm not paying for your funeral or the guy resembling your mangled corpse. I had an experience on the deep web that changed my life. I was about 15 when this happened. My parents cared about me, but I didn't really care what they thought. I did a few drugs here and there and hung out with what people would call the wrong people. In other words, I was one of those kids who would get into a lot of trouble and I was stopped by the cops multiple times. 
One of my friends, we'll call him Derek. Derek was 17 and was into drugs and stuff like that. I asked him where he was getting drugs without getting caught. He then went on explaining about the deep web. He said, it is a place on the internet where you are completely anonymous and unwatched. He told me if I wanted drugs, I would have to download the Tor browser so I wouldn't get caught buying drugs. So when I got home, I fired up my PC and downloaded the Tor browser Derek was talking about. Pretty soon, I was surfing the so-called deep web. There were a bunch of other illegal stuff besides drugs. I don't even want to say what they were. I ended up on a site called Silk Road. There are at least hundreds of drugs on this site. I purchased some drugs via Bitcoin. Bitcoins are an anonymous currency used to buy things off the deep web or for some other stuff. I gave the seller my address and all the information and stuff like that. Anyway, I got an email from the seller telling me thank you for your purchase and that the item would be shipped to you in less than a week. Anyway, it was a weekend and I was going with my friends to go see a movie. We saw The Purge and overall it was pretty cool. The movie ended around 12 and so I went home. When I was walking home though, I could have sworn I heard something walking behind me. I looked around but there was nothing there. I'm approaching my front door and then from behind me I hear the words, your drugs have been delivered. I turned around, and I see three men wearing masks on looking directly at me. I told them, what do you want? There was no response. Then, all of a sudden, one guy pulled out a gun, shooting, and thank god the bullet missed me. I ran inside the house and locked the door. The men started cussing loudly while banging on the door. My dad then came out with his rifle and opened fire at them. They all took off and I was shaking in a corner. My parents called the cops and they all wanted answers from me. I told them everything and everything about the deep web. My parents were talked to and I got in some major trouble with both my parents and the law. It's been six years since that incident. I'm now 21 and I completely changed. I quit hanging out with the wrong people, I quit doing drugs and now I'm in college and have a girlfriend. However, I still wondered how the incident would have turned out had my parents not been home. Let me just say that the deep web and the dark web are two very completely different things. Most people think that the deep web consists of child porn, hitmen, murder and torture, but all of that is in the dark web. The deep web has drugs, illegal documents, and stuff like that. I was stupid one time for going both on the deep web and the dark web. I wanted to go on to see what it was and this was before I knew what was actually on there. I knew how to set up Tor and everything so there was not a problem with that. I was then going through link after link looking for what I could find. I found sites that sold firearms, drugs, and actual human body parts. I never knew you could buy human on the deep web, but apparently you can. Eventually, I found a site called Camelot. The site allowed you to access people's webcams without them knowing. I just saw people on their computers watching videos or something. No cam girls or anything. I kept searching and I ended up on a site called Your Photos. I was extremely curious of this site. It was basically pictures of people in public. There were adults, teens, children, and elderly people too. Some photos were of people in their rooms naked, but it didn't seem like they noticed that they were being filmed. I then scrolled down and saw a picture of someone that looked familiar. The person in the photo was me. I mumbled the words, w what the? The photo was of me on the beach, taken with some friends. I clicked on the information of the photo. It had all my personal information, 
my address, my phone number, and my social security number. I had enough. How in the world did they get my personal information? Then, I got a text on my phone that read, Hey Mark, did you like what you just saw? I typed back, Who is this, and how do you know about this? He replied saying, I know everything about you, Mark. I typed that I'm calling the cops and he better take down the post. He then said, Make me. I yelled for my parents and they called the cops. When they arrived, I showed them the messages and reported the site. A few days later, we got a response from the police. They said that they could not track down the number for some reason. And because of that, I will never, ever go back on the deep web again.